I'm still kind of blown away with the horses that I get to work with that uh, despite the trauma that they got through and the bad treatment that they still put themselves out there to have another go and they, they, they give you another chance. This horse is, is a 12-year-old Paso Creole horse that um, has been here for a few, only a few days and she's lost trust in people. Uh, I don't blame her. Um, she's been pushed a little bit too hard and every interaction she has with um, humans has been not a pleasant one. My name is Carlos Tabernaberry. I ride uh, Whispering Acres here in Kilmore, Victoria. I work a lot with horses with trauma or horses that develop behavioral issues due to poor handling or poor understanding. I work with people to get them to understand the horses better, to not only the way they handle them on the ground, but how they ride them, and for the horses to have a, a better life and a better deal than uh, most of them get. About three days ago, it used to take me about probably a good 30 minutes to just to touch her and, and put a, a halter and a lead rope. Um, the whole idea is I always say that a horse um, can't be scared and curious at the same time. Uh, my idea is to get the horse to be uh, curious, not scared. So if I scare the horse, if I chase it around, then I'm not achieving anything. And um, there's two things that I wouldn't do. One is hurry up and the other one is tippy toe around her because she saw me walk coming here and she knows that I don't crawl. So all I'm doing is nothing more than just get a sort of curious about me rather than trying to avoid. I grew up in Argentina where I'm a fourth generation horseman. I follow horse no traditions and I let the horse be the teacher and I was a student, so I'm still the student. I just ask her to come without pulling. A lot of times people pull on the horses, on the rope. She's kind of stuck in there. If I start pulling, um, it goes against the nature of the horse. Horses don't actually pull each other, they push. So I'm more likely to make sense to her if I ask some pushing here just to back up a bit and lower that head. Because when the head is up like that, there's a lot of adrenaline on that horse. Um, so I don't pull, I take the slack out of the rope here and see if she can follow a field of where I want her to go, there. And the more I can do that, the calmer she stay. So I'm just, again, doing a bit of body language here, which is nothing more than just looking at the hindquarters and asking it to, to yield. So we could say that was that would be the pecking order, where I'm, by doing ground exercises, I'm just putting myself higher in the pecking order. In this case, I'm saying, well, I'll lead, you follow. And if I started to lift my arm here, you can see the difference. Just on that simple movement, how the horse is already worried. Um, and I said, the horses don't play any games. The, the only game they play is you move, you lose kind of thing. The biggest misconception with horses is that a lot of people believe or are made to believe that the horse is there to get you, that when the horse doesn't do what you want, the horse is just kind of taking the mickey out of you. I always said there's no such problems, you know, it's just problems of understanding and communication with the horse. Most of them become scared of humans or scared of people because when the horse didn't do what he had to do or what the person told them to do, uh, they get heavy handed on the horse. I always said when, when you use force, you run out of knowledge, so um, you gotta look for answers, you know, always kind of f find a way. If I wanna stop, this is what not to do, what I don't like to do, just to, to show, if I did that, it's kind of, I tell her to stop. Once again, she's high-headed and uptight. And on a horse like her, that she's pretty timid. I do something more like horses would do, where she's really paying attention to myself. I'm gonna shot, shot in my step. So I'm gonna say mimic, just like she mimicked the mother when she was born. I walk shorter steps. And if I wanted to stop, or for her to realize that I'm not doing anything, I put my head down like if I'm grazing, something like this. And then she stops, I didn't have to do anything. There's two schools, I find that quite common. One is like the aggressive school where the horse is just pulled around and 
hit or use, use of force, and then the other ones where the horse is treated like a pet and spoiled, and they just it's just been a, just as bad because you know there's a big puppy dog when you got a half half a ton horse trying to step on your toes and come on top of you. So I think that's where people go wrong. They approach everything from a human point of view rather than approach it from a horse's point of view. I'm gonna introduce her to some horses on like things that move fast and make a lot of noise. So in this case, it's just a, a bag with a stick and a plastic bag. Now you can see that, yeah, so she, you can see how she's very reactive and scared. Once again, she's an older horse as well. Um, so she was some, if you had a rider on her back, and I'm doing nothing with a plastic bag, I'm just, all I'm doing is not pulling on her and letting her know that I'm here to support her. So this is where I walk away and see if I can get her to kind of follow it. The horses um, get a little bit more confidence when they can follow something that scares them rather than, rather than the thing coming towards them. My, my aim is to get close to with a plastic bag, but no scare up. So the wind picks it up, I'll let her reach for the bag. And let's see if I can touch on the right side. You can see she's about ready to leave. That's a crucial time there. That's nice, you know. And then I reassure her with my hand at the same time. Okay, so if she runs, like I said, she jumps or something here, I'm in a safe position. That's already heaps better. The term horse whisperer dates back to the 1900s, you know, and it was based on, it was an Irishman called Sullivan that whispered this m magic Indian word that he was given to him that the horse would just calm. So the horse whisperer came out of that. I had a DH newspaper many years ago where they came and said, oh, you're a horse whisperer. We watched the movie. I said, I'm more like a horse listener. Like I said, I just try and to listen to what the horse is doing. This horse is uh, a horse that I inherited. Didn't cost me anything. Uh, had caused someone trouble. Um, so I took her on and very dominant sort of alpha mare. And, um, you know, she had a fetish of kicking other horses and scars on her legs. And so I said, I'll take her. What I get to see or, or the cases that I get to see, it is heartbreaking because I there, there are cases where I might go to a clinic or a horse that might come here for training or I come across at a house call and I get choked up still, you know, it's not been a romantic, but um, I really feel for them, you know, and I, and I think that just like you and I, they, they've got a right to have a, uh, a pretty comfortable life. All horses want is to feel safe and comfortable, nothing more. I don't use the beat, and I always say, so the only beat a horse needs is a bit of understanding. So if I feel that I have to get on a horse, control it through a bridle and a beat, then obviously I'm not getting through. If you look at history, we've been riding horses for 6,000 years, and for the first one and a half thousand years of riding, there, there was never any bits or bridles in that way. So I don't need a bit to control my horse. I, I, it's a relationship that controls my horse, not the gadgets that I put on the horse's face. Putting the time and the effort and the understanding is gonna make the horse go faster. I just make sure if she moves, I'm gonna get it nice and steady, so I just move her feet. And by all means, it's not a... Um, super school horse or anything like that. It's just, I wanted just to be that if I had to do different jobs with this horse that I could. And the horse waits for me there to get on and she doesn't move away or anything. While I get ready, if I was to put a leg on this horse right here, she'll move. But I wanted also to know that if I lost my stirrup here in an emergency and I didn't let go of that rein that she can flex and I can have some control. So once again, the control is not about what I put on the mouth or on the face is about what we put on the horse's mind. Every horse is different, believe it or not. I mean, they, they, they have the same language, but it's individual, just like people. You learn so much from them too, not only from a horsemanship point of view, but um, had to be a little bit more like them, you know, so giving and forgiving. So what I love about horses is uh, they have taught me to be a better person, number one. So that's that's what I love about it. And and the reward of seeing them 
you know, go away when you might not see them ever again, but knowing that you've done your work and they, they're better off than when they came to you. So uh, you can never get enough of that.